Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we get to finish up the book of Exodus. And the, uh, also this section about the tabernacle. And in chapter 40 verses 17 through 33, we see the tabernacle finally being erected. Uh, we saw yesterday, and we talked about in our devotion yesterday, uh, the tabernacle being built, everything being constructed, but now it's going to be erected and, and put up as the tabernacle. And as we think about the tabernacle, we can think about just how beautiful it must have been. You know, as you were walking in the wilderness and, and you came upon the tabernacle, you'd see these fine linen sheets all the way around the outer court. And, and then you'd pass through the veil into the, into the outer court where you'd see this bronze altar and the bronze laver. And, and you'd pass through that into the holy place and see everything overlaid with gold. You see the gold lampstand the the uh, the the uh, the table of the showbread if I can get it out and then also the altar of incense and then if you were the high priest once a year you got to go into the holy of holies where you would see the ark of the covenant overlaid with gold and and handcrafted you know, with these beautiful cherubim with their wings outstretched outstretched uh, it would have been just a beautiful beautiful sight. But the tabernacle wasn't just beautiful because of the way that it looked. Uh, obviously it was uh, beautiful, but uh, there was. it's also beautiful in what it symbolizes and in its typology and how it so pictures for us our experience in the spiritual life. Um, and, and we can see that in, in the way in which it was erected here by Moses. Uh, you see the first thing mentioned, uh, this is in uh, verse 18 of chapter 40, first thing mentioned is the sockets. Uh, he laid it, he laid its sockets down. And if you remember the sockets were made out of silver. And in the scriptures silver symbolizes redemption. Uh, in the book of Numbers uh, the firstborn were redeemed uh, by silver. Also Christ, if you remember, was uh, betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. And so silver is connected to the redemptive work of Christ. And and so everything starts with Christ's redemption. Just as, every, just as the erecting of the tabernacle started with the laying down of the sockets, everything in the spiritual life for us starts with that foundation of Christ as our Redeemer. And then you have the boards which symbolize us. Uh, you, had, you had these boards that were standing up in the tabernacle. And uh, we, each of us are like a board in, in God's tabernacle. Yesterday we talked about how the tabernacle symbolizes the church. And we as individual boards make up the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God. But... The only way that we can stand is by the silver socket. The only way we can stand is by the redemptive work of Christ. And that is our foundation. And we are able to stand strong upon those sockets. But there's also a need for unity among the individual boards. Uh, in the church, we are all individuals. But yet we are all tied together as well. And that's the significance of the bars that ran across the boards into the... the uh, the golden rings and the golden rings symbolize the eternal spirit and and the boards running through or the bars running through it represents our walk in the spirit and as we each individually walk according to the spirit there is unity remember Christ, uh, Paul talked about uh, the unity of the spirit uh, it's the Holy Spirit that brings unity and ties the church together as one unit and so you have that pictured here. And then you have the covering, which shows all the various aspects of the work of Christ. Uh, you have Christ himself uh, shown in the, in the first layer where it talks about uh, the fine linen that was made up of uh, blue, purple, and scarlet material. Uh, the fine linen representing his righteousness and his fine living. But then also the blue symbolizing him as the heavenly man who came down to earth. The purple showing him as the king. And then also the uh, scarlet that shows him as the redeemer. Which 
which signifies his uh, sacrifice and his redemption. But then above that you had uh, the covering made of goat's hair, uh, which is symbolic of sin. If you remember in Matthew chapter 25, when God was separating uh, uh, the sheep and the goats, the sheep were the ones that would come in and find entrance into the kingdom, and the goats were the ones that would not. And so they represent sinners and those separated from God. And so the goat hair represents uh, that which would grow out of the goat. And therefore it symbolizes what would grow out of the sinner, which is sin. And so you have a layer that represents sin. But above that was the ram skin dyed red, which shows the covering of sins that Christ has given us. Uh, the word atonement actually means a covering. And so you have a picture of atonement. The ram skins dyed red representing the sacrifice of Christ, the blood that he shed, which covers the sins of the world. And then on top of that was uh, the purple skin. That was uh, probably either like a, a beaver skin or it could have been whale skin, something like that, dolphin skin. Whatever it was, it was very tough, very durable, and was rain was weatherproof and rainproof and so it was there for the protection of the tabernacle and that represents Christ as well uh, Christ protects his church he covers his church and protects it um, as that as that outer covering would protect the tabernacle from the outside elements Christ protects us from the outside influence of the world and protects us from uh, the attacks of Satan the evil one and so you see this complete picture of Christ in his person in his redemption and also in his protection and he's covering the boards uh, showing that Christ covers us and, and protects us and then inside this structure you have uh, the Ark of the Covenant and and that shows, of course, uh, the presence of God uh, in the tabernacle. And, of course, we as the church, we have the presence of God within us, uh, individually but also collectively. Uh, remember the scripture that we read where uh, God had promised that he would walk among them and dwell in them. And, he, and they would be, he would be their God and they would be his people. And, and we see that realized uh, in the New Testament according to the new covenant but then also uh, you had the table of showbread which uh, represents Christ as our sustenance as our life uh, you have the lampstand which symbolizes the uh, the divine light that that illuminates from the spirit it could also symbolize the light that we receive from God's Word uh, but it would light up the whole inner part of the tabernacle. And then you had uh, the altar of incense, which symbolizes the prayers that we lift up to God. And so you had this tabernacle filled with life and sustenance, filled with light, uh, just illuminated with light, but then also letting up this beautiful fragrance of incense, uh, symbolizing prayer. And then you have God's own presence there, His own glory there. Also, this is a beautiful picture of the church life and a picture of our individual lives as well. And then you go out and you have uh, the labor for washing. We already talked about that in a previous devotion. But then you also have the altar in which the sacrifice was laid. The burnt offerings would be offered up there. Uh, and Christ is the fulfillment of the sacrifices. And so these symbolize and represent the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ and so the altar shows us that and so we have all of these beautiful pictures of the spiritual life that, that we can reflect on and think about as we read about this tabernacle and, it, and it's just a beautiful beautiful picture so however beautiful it would have been to physically see the tabernacle we can see just as much beauty if not more beauty in everything that the tabernacle symbolizes. So hopefully this this uh, devotion has helped you guys maybe understand a little bit more uh, of what the tabernacle represents, but also overall just to appreciate it and to really appreciate uh, its place in scriptures and how it can help us in understanding our role 
as God's people and as his building and as his temple. With that, I thank you guys for watching the video. I love you guys. Hope you all have a great day. God bless.